Okay, I guess we are ready. Is it 2 o'clock? Yeah, I think it's uh, it's about 2 o'clock. Great. Welcome, everybody. Rich Maverganis here from Discover Video. We're going to talk about uh, digital signage. So welcome to a digital signage webinar. We're going to uh, spend about 25, 20 minutes, and we'll go through digital signage. And then you can ask questions. So on your player page, you'll notice there's an area where you can ask a question. Just type in your name ask a question, and we'll take all the questions at the end of our, uh, of our session here, right? So this is live, real time. So if you're watching this later, because we're recording this as well, obviously you can't ask questions, but you can always send us an e email and ask a question, and we'll give you the email address at the end of this, uh, of this presentation. Okay, so let's get started. Briefly, a little bit about Discover Video. Been around a long time, but doing this uh, it's just about uh, at the advent of uh, streaming media. Um, and we've won lots of awards. Uh, the one that we're most recently proud of is one of the largest uh, of the 500 fastest growing uh, companies in the United States. So that's, that's pretty cool. Veteran owned and um, yeah, we're doing pretty well. Uh, so uh, some of you already know us. Some of you perhaps are just beginning to know us. But, um, you know, welcome. That's enough about Discover Video. Let's go right into our topic. So, you know, I think it's a changing landscape out there for digital signage. You know, back in the old days, you used to hang up uh, uh, pieces of paper and and uh, try to just, you know, post signs around. Today, it's a, it's a very complicated and diverse landscape for digital signage. There's even trade shows now dedicated just to digital signage. And it ranges from commercial billboards alongside the highway. You've got the old dancing hamburger above the lunch counter uh, for digital signage. So it's a, it's a pretty complicated and noisy environment out there for digital signage. And why has digital signage become so popular? Why is this a thing now? Well, fundamentally, it's for two reasons. Principally, it's because the cost of the display technology has come down so much. Um, you know, and it wasn't that long ago that a... Uh, a 42-inch flat panel plasma display. Remember plasma? Um, you know, it used to cost a thousand, two thousand dollars, and now you can get a 42-inch uh, LCD or or uh, LED display for you know two hundred dollars, two hundred fifty dollars. If you buy them around Christmas time, you might get something even uh, under a hundred dollars sometimes. Sort of amazing. So the cost of the display technology has just plummeted. At the same time, availability of bandwidth is everywhere. You have the Internet of Things phenomenon, and we're deeply engaged in, in, uh, in Internet of Things, or IoT. And I think uh, digital signage is probably within that family. Although, we're going to be talking about delivering not just images, but video to all of the digital signage displays. Now, it's a big business, a multi-billion dollar business, but most of the activity for digital signage is around commercial advertising. You know, as you drive down the highway, increasingly you're seeing the billboards, you know, big LED uh, electronic billboards. Um, I mentioned the lunch counter. There's a picture there of a lunch counter. And people spend an enormous amount of time and energy making sure that juicy hamburger above the lunch counter is just right, right, to inspire you to buy. That's a little bit different than the enterprise where the metrics and the, and the, the needs for digital signage are driven by other things. And that's where we focus. In this case, in the enterprise, you're driven more by simplicity, ease of use, scalability, and perhaps cost than you would be on the commercial adver advertising side. Now, we really do both, but we focus on the enterprise. We focus on you guys. So some examples of that range from um, some of our customers on, uh, on Wall Street, who use the Discover video proposition to deliver live TV to displays around trading floors, for example. And that's a component of digital signage. They happen to use Roku devices, and we're going to talk about that. To uh, schools, um, you know, you go to uh, many school districts, and there's a now a, a display in the front lobby, the back lobby, in the auditorium, in the gymnasium. In some schools, they're at every hallway intersection, and it's uh, obviously um, underscoring the educational message, but also uh, showing you schedules, news, and information about that particular, that particular enterprise, that particular school. Same thing in the corporate environments 
where in some cases we see digital signage displays virtually at every hallway uh, intersection, sometimes um, at the end of uh, every hall, you know, engineering department, HR department, and so on. So, and that's one of the advantages we have is it's unlimited signage. We don't nickel and dime you in the, in the Discover Video case. So we're gonna talk about that. So what do people show in digital signage? Well, you know, in the enterprise, I just want to show PowerPoint. You can do that. Or Google Slides, which is sort of, you know, a Google version of PowerPoint. And uh, that's all I want to do. And if you try to use the commercial advertising applications for that, you can be intimidated really, really quickly. People want to distrib distribute live TV. You're sitting in a lobby. Yeah, there's the news and information you know, why my company is doing well. Here's the uh, stock ticker right on the sign showing how well my company is doing. But we're also going to entertain you on that same sign showing you live TV, you know, maybe CNN news feed or, or a local TV, right? So live video and video on demand has, has got to be part of it. The recorded presentations, the recorded videos, maybe a seminar, maybe this seminar might be displayed in our digital signage. But you have produced content or other content that you want to include in a playlist and just show that over and over again in a playlist. And then, of course, images, whether it's PowerPoint or produced images. So th this is the content that is typically shown in a digital signage display. Now let's talk about players. There are basically three kinds of players, right? And let's review each of these so we don't get confused about uh, which one's which and the application of which. So the first kind is maybe what uh, some of you, unfortunately, may be doing right now. So you take a computer, you uh, snake a VGA cable up over the roof rafters to a display someplace, and you're running a PowerPoint loop. Hey, there's a lot of people doing that, right? And, th and there's nothing wrong with that as long as you don't mind the sneaker net of running little USB cable, you know, USB memory sticks around. And, and you know, you know that you can do better than that. But, hey, that's a, that's a type of digital signage that, um, you know, we see people doing. You also have a streaming player. So show of hands, you know, how many of you have Netflix or uh, Hulu or, or Amazon Fire or any of the various over-the-top, you know, uh, entertainment video systems that are available today. So those are streaming players, aren't they? They even call themselves streaming players. Streaming players says that you can only view the content when you have a network connection. It's not downloading the content to your little device and then playing it out locally. It's streaming it over the network. Now that's great, and that's the only way you could possibly do live video, right? It has to come in some sort of streaming modality. But in the enterprise, you'd be concerned about using a lot of bandwidth. You'd be concerned about somebody kicking a wire out, right? If you have hundreds of these, you know, there might be a, a, a better ways. And that's what we're going to show you next. So streaming player, which we do, and many of our customers have our streaming players today. Another approach, and I would argue probably a better approach, is what we would refer to as a hybrid player. Hybrid player certainly plays streaming. It plays the live video. But you know what? For the video on demand, the images, the playlists, all the content that is non-live, it's actually going to download it and keep a local copy, including YouTube video. It's going to keep a local copy. So that once the playlist has been loaded, once all the content is there, let's say, you know, five minutes after it started, you can actually disconnect the network cable and it'll continue to play, right? Maybe not you know, the news and information feeds, which are streaming coming from the internet, but you get the idea. Depending upon what you're trying to do, you the, the hybrid player, which downloads the content, you know, can be very, uh, very, very useful. It even says that you could take a hybrid player and run on a dial-up network. Remember the dial-up modems, you know, the, the AOL disk days, right? So... Point is, even if you have very low bandwidth, it's still going to play. It just may take a long time before the, the, the content is loaded, but you're good to go. Yet you still have centralized control and priority alert and some other things that we're going to talk about. So that's the idea of a hybrid player. And then you have players that are built into the display technology. You know, in our case, we support a Samsung Smart TV. We're going to talk about that. You go to your Samsung, uh, you create an account, you can download the free Discover Video Samsung digital signage app, 
put in your, your address and your code, and voila, you're playing uh, digital signage without an external player. Uh, like I said, there's some, some issues with that, um, but in many cases, it's a, it's, a, it's a great solution. So now that I have the video, right, now that I've received the video from this player, not for the uh, smart TV, but some sort of player, how could I process it if I wanted to show it, for example, on a video wall? You know, we get calls from time to time. It says, does your player support, you know, a video wall? And it's like, well, guys, you're sort of mixing apples and oranges here. Um, sure, it, it, our, our player delivers audio and video, you know, let's say via HDMI output. And you have that HDMI output, you can plug it into anything that receives an HDMI output, arguably or mostly a TV, a TV monitor. But if you plugged it into a video processor, what does the video processor do? It takes the audio video, well, the video, and it breaks it up into uh, small, smaller segments so that you can display that one video on multiple displays and in very clever layouts. And here's an example of some layouts that a video processor might support. So a video wall or a video processor isn't part of a digital signage solution per se, but it's part of the display technology of how you want to display that, okay? Um, actually, let me show you a example of uh, digital signage. So I have right here a digital sign playing uh, here on this uh, small monitor. And that is connected to this very device live right now. This is a sign stick. We're going to look at a sign stick in a moment. But that sign stick is connected to our network. This is on Wi-Fi right now. I've got a little extension cord here, but normally I would take this, that's an HDMI output. I would just plug that right in the TV, apply power, and I am done. So that's how I do the digital signage. And I've selected one of many templates, which we're gonna look at in a minute. But I wanted you to make sure that you understand that this is one of the players, and HDMI comes out, and away you go. And one of the reasons you would want to use a player like this is because you'd want to support priority alert. So let's go back to the slide here and take a look at uh, what priori priority alert is. Priority alert allows you to uh, interrupt the display of one, some, or all of your digital signage displays and display something else for the duration of the alert. What would that something else be? Well, it might be a message, a text message. Get, get out. It might be live video. Maybe I switch it to a live video of me giving you instructions to exit from the north side, not the south side. You know, God forbid there's a school lockdown, a shooter, an emergency, a tornado, a, a hurricane, whatever, snow emergency, go home. Or it could be a pre-recorded message, which might be appropriate for a, uh, for a snow emergency, right? Do something clever. But, you know, Priority Alert is also used uh, commonly for um, non-emergencies. So I want, uh, at every morning at uh, 7.30, I do a live morning announcement. So schools do this. Schools will have their kids assemble. And there's a whole other seminar that we've done on morning announcements. Please check it out if you haven't already seen that. And at 7.30, the kids are going to do their morning announcement live I want that to be shown on all of the TVs or all of the TVs in the middle school or a different one and all the TVs in the, in the uh, elementary or high school. Same thing in enterprise, right? In our corporate customers, we have uh, corporate customers who do exactly this. But it's not a morning announcement of kids. It's the CEO executive broadcast. So the executive broadcast can interrupt all of the signs or some of the signs at your choice and they will play that live video for the duration of that event and go back to what they were doing when they were done, right? And you can even schedule your signs to, to do that sort of stuff. So Priority Alert is part of why you would want your, your digital signage part of a larger comprehensive system. More on that in just a moment, but important for you to understand how Priority Alert works. All right, speaking of a larger comprehensive system. So here is a Devo system. And we've had other seminars and, and we've talked about a system architecture, you know, quite a bit. So the, the system itself supports live video distribution, video on demand, 
uh, infinite number of channels that you can support, not infinite, but unlimited number of channels, which are collections of content. You know, it does lecture capture, it does presentation, synchronized multimedia, uh, does clinical assessment recording, it does lecture capture, uh, security uh, for uh, security cameras, TV distribution, active directory, it does a lot of stuff. Today, we're focused on digital signage. But you can understand that I want to have a central repository for my content, for my videos or my live videos, and then I want to put them to various uses. View it on the phone, on the desktop, view it on your mobile device, view it on a Roku device, and I want to send it some of the videos in a playlist in a certain order to my digital signage displays, right? So there's a big advantage to having it all part of a single comprehensive system. Okay. Let's talk about how you would set up digital signage. So I told you, it's not for the advertising executive. If you look in digital signage, you know, systems out there, <coughs> excuse me, you could easily be intimidated. You know, X coordinate, Y coordinate, Z coordinate, so many pixels over here. And again, something you absolutely want to do if you're trying to, you know, sell juicy hamburgers above the lunch counter and make sure that... Uh, it says, uh, you know, 39 cents plus sales tax, uh, asterisk, right? That's not what you're trying to do, and you're just trying to do PowerPoint, and you need simplicity or, or in high-quality video, as I'm showing you here. The, the, uh, the Discover Video proposition is to give you simple templates. You also can do custom signs as well, but it starts with simple templates. So let's take a look at these simple templates. One of these templates might be Google Slides. Really, really easy to use. Or it might be a text playlist or a video playlist. Let's set up one. So if I were going to do a video playlist, what would I do? Well, I would click on it and say Create. And then I'd fill this out. So I'd give it a name. I might give it a logo to display on the top of the, uh, of the digital signage display. And I would select that logo or image from something that is already on the system. If not, I could upload it now. And then I would select a list of videos. So I've previously created a list. And you know what a list is. Video 1, play it from 5 minutes to 10 minutes. And video 2, play it here. And video 3, play it here. So I made a list of videos. I'm going to select that list so that the digital signage will play those videos in the order that I've entered them into the list. And I can adjust that, you know, the order that I want it to be. And then I, if optionally, I can include a news feed. So I might enter an RSS news feed. If you're not familiar with RSS, Google it. But there's lots and lots of news feeds out there. I like the CNN news feed or the NPR news feed. Here I think I have Reuters news feed uh, configured. And it's just showing you world news in textual format with, with headlines. You can also enter your own RSS feed or your own text list. So I can say line one, hello, line two, glad you're here, line three, and so on. So I can make my own and have my own scrolling text list within my digital sign. Pretty easy, and I think you'd agree not too intimidating. And when I'm done, I say save, ta-da, I now have the digital sign completed, and off it goes, and it can be displayed on an unlimited number of displays, and you're going to have an unlimited number of signs, an unlimited number of different signs, and you can have an unlimited number of users, each configuring and, mon and, and managing their own signs. So pretty powerful, pretty comprehensive, I think you'd agree. One of the templates that is in there is uh, what we call real-time announce. And here's an example of it. On the right-hand side of the screen, you're seeing a control page. So this is a control page that I would open up on my cell phone, right? I, our, our customers would typically use this like on an iPhone or an Android, but you do it on a computer, it doesn't matter. So you have this simple control page. And on the left-hand side, we're showing you what the sign looks like when this particular feature is in your playlist or when you uh, show this on your digital sign. So think about it this way. We have a sign scheduled from 6 a.m. until, I don't know, let's say 3 p.m. Think about it as a school, until uh, 2.30 p.m. At 2.30 p.m., the sign changes to what you see here, and it says Bus 101. Now, that might say 
it might say uh, 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 Maple Street, and the next one might say Elm Street, and so on and so on. Here, for our example, I said Bus 101, Bus 102. But it could also be somebody's name. It could be a queue list in a corporate environment, right? It's not just for buses. That's why it's a real-time announce system. Anyway, the point is, me, as the owner of this sign, I have a little control panel, and all I have to do is press go. And the instant I press go on my control panel, the display changes to go, telling the, in this example, students, okay, it's now time to board bus 101. And that is displayed throughout the school. So it has a real-time announce system as one of the digital signage possibilities built into the system. Really handy for schools. All right, let's talk about SignStick now, right? SignStick are, is, is uh, now shipping. Um, very powerful, very, very capable. I showed you the example, right? Here's my SignStick. This is running live right now. And we're displaying some content. We're saying, you know, here's a, an RSS news feed. Here's a text feed. And I'm playing some, uh, some video on demand in a playlist. And that's all coming out of the SignStick right now. But the sign stick itself, it's an appliance. Just plug it in. It has a local user interface. As soon as you plug it in, it shows its IP address. So you can manage it remotely from that IP if you want. And um, it's compact, simple, plug and play. It's a hybrid. It automatically downloads your video on demand, text, images, and so on. So it can play without a network after it's been loaded. right? So no more do you have to worry about... Um, you know, uh, whether or not you can show high quality video because you don't have enough bandwidth. It'll download it and, and play it locally. And um, uh, it also obviously supports priority alert. So I can cause sign stick to change to uh, whatever I want at the touch of a button. So that's sign stick. You also have what we call the digital signage media player. So here is a media player. And a media player is the same as the appliance, but it's a little more powerful, has a little bit more storage in it, so you can um, uh, cache more content in the, uh, in the digital signage media player. But the idea is the same, right? Next, we have the, let's go to the next one, which is the Roku. Okay, so uh, our customer there, uh, a Wall Street customer, they're using Roku devices, Roku 3, and in some cases, Roku 4. <coughs> Excuse me. Roku is great. Right? Roku, you just run down to Walmart. You can go buy one or get them online, about $100. Um, but let's be clear. Roku is a consumer product, right? It's a, there's no security. You, you, you can't prevent somebody from using their uh, remote control app on their, on their smartphone to, to mess with it. Um, you know, it's got some security issues. It's streaming only. It's not going to do the, the, the download and caching and play out, but it's really convenient. And we have a lot of customers successfully using Roku, and I think they use it because it's just inexpensive, right? It's, it's one of the more, more inexpensive ways of doing it, but it comes with some issues, right? So as long as you're aware that you're happy with a consumer product, please go ahead and use Roku. I would recommend using Roku you know, for event-based stuff. I'm going to, I need this sign over here. I'm going to use it like this. And if I'm going to turn it on every day and navigate to the signage app and let it play, great, right? But don't expect it to have the uh, rugged enterprise forever behavior of a sign stick or a digital signage media player. But it's available to you, right? And, uh, we would want you to use it. Same thing with a Samsung Smart TV. This is really, really cool. So if you have a Samsung Smart TV of a selected model, either the Tizen models or, or what came before that, you can download from Samsung the free Discover Video signage app. It's right there in the free Samsung store available from your Samsung device. So you download that. You put in the code that comes from your Devo system, and voila, it is playing digital signage with no player, right? The player is built into the, into the display. So that's really convenient, but once again, this is a consumer product. And as a consumer product, you're going to have issues. It's not going to have any security. The security is going to be whatever the Samsung commer uh, commercial consumer panel gives you, which is basically none, right? People might be able to mess with it. 
and um, it may not have the reliability that you want. But pictured there in that uh, in the lower right of the of the of the slide here is a, a one of the schools that uses Samsung. They use I don't know four, five, eight Samsung. They, they have a lot of these displays around, and they swear by it. But every day they run around and they have to turn the TVs on and they have to select the app because it's not appliance, right? It's not part of the proposition. But it supports everything that we talked about, priority alert and, and, and so on. So that's probably your, your very, very lowest cost solution. So that's an option for you. A lot of benefits, of course, to digital signage. You probably suspected that. That's probably why you tuned in. So what are those benefits? Immediate communication and instant communications, centrally managed that you can control or you can give authority for any number of users to control and they can control their own signs, right? That's pretty cool. Video, live video, text, images, PowerPoint, RSS, news feeds, weather, all included within the digital signage proposition. As I keep saying, it's unlimited. Unlimited signs, unlimited playlists, unlimited number of users, unlimited administrators, unlimited displays. It supports both live and on-demand content um, for multiple users. It supports that real-time alert, something to absolutely look for. I think you'll find the whole system to be very affordable. You know, we have uh, customers that buy the entire system only for the pro proposition of digital signage. And then they discover the advantages of live streaming and, and, and VOD you know, distribution and channels and all that. Or sometimes they're just doing uh, the live distribution and suddenly discover, oh my gosh, we got this great digital signage capability. So you know, we have no ax to grind. Uh, whichever, uh, uh, whichever comes first, you know, we're perfectly happy with. And I think you'll find that the system, our system, is intentionally made for the mere mortal, right? You don't have to be a, a, an expert to uh, manage and create digital signs. I've recently walked into a school to discover that the um, the clerk that greets the parents, you know, or I don't know, is handing out the excuse slips or whatever the heck they do with uh, at the desk in the in the junior high school. That clerk, nice nice person. Um, they're responsible for managing all of the digital signage for the school, and they find it to be trivially easy, compared certainly compared to what they uh, what they had to do before, right? So, again, made for the mere mortal, really really simple. So that is it. I think we are ready for some questions. So if you guys have posted any questions, we can answer those for you right now. What do you got? First question is uh, on pricing and cost. How would you? Pricing and cost. Okay, so let's see. So a basic Devo system, the whole system with all of these capabilities, if it's on the cloud, it might run from $500, $700 a month with all of that sort of stuff built in. And, of course, the digital signage is, is just part of that. Uh, an enterprise system on the premise with all of these capabilities it might be as as little as um, you know under ten thousand dollars for the entire enterprise. Large enterprises with stream pump and lots of other components to the system can get up to a hundred thousand dollars. You know, in a very very large enterprise, um, the uh, display devices range from free. You can view it on a web page for gosh sakes if you want to uh, Roku. Uh, for 100 bucks to things like a, a sign stick, which might cost around $500. So there's quite a range. We're also um, uh, getting ready to uh, uncover a lower cost, small enterprise version, which might be appropriate for just digital signage or for small enterprise that'll keep that cost down even more. So there you go. Uh, can the signs be changed from a remote location? Can the signs be changed from a remote location? Not only yes, but heck yes. I mean, that's, that's, that's the whole point. So you can log into the system and you can say, all right, I'm going to change sign number one from uh, to read, you know, Tuesday's lunch to Wednesday's lunch. And as soon as I hit save, it's, it's being displayed on all of the displays that are pointing to that sign. Right, So I could have a sign A, sign B, sign C, and player A, B, and C. And player A, B, and C could all be pointing to sign A. 
They could all be pointing to sign B, or maybe player A is pointing to A and B to B and C to D. I mean, C to C, if you get, get my drift. So it, it's very, very flexible, uh, and, and uh, yeah, it's all centrally managed, and, and I think it's pretty easy. Can you speak a little bit about the uh, resolutions that are... Ah, resolutions that are supported. So, uh, so the answer is HD resolution currently, you know, up to nineteen twenty by ten eighty, right? Ten eighty p. Four K is is coming, right? I think we'll see more four K or UHD resolutions. But for now, everything's HD. You know, pretty much standard HD. We're not seeing a lot of deployment of of four uh, K monitors yet, but that's coming. That'll be the next. You know the next uh, the next wave, um, <coughs> so so HD. Yep. Uh, last question is: uh, Could you view any of these uh, signs on mobile devices? Oh, could you view the signs on mobile devices? So I guess the answer is yes, you can. Um, possibly not the live video included in a uh, in a digital sign, um, but I'm not sure why you would want to do that. So you have a Devo system. If you have the system, then you can view any video on demand or live video on mobile devices, period. You know, absolutely can. The very definition of digital signage is to display it on signs, right? That's what it's for. I'm not sure there's a lot of people who are going to take a cell phone and you know, nail it up to a wall for, for, for digital signage. So we think about digital signage as a large display technology, and, and mobile certainly is not that. Now, with that said, you could display it because it's available on a web page. So it will display, but it's not optimized for, for mobile, mobile, uh, mobile use. So there you go. Okay, so that's about it. I think that's our time. It's uh, probably about, what, half an hour, 25 minutes? Good. Well, thank you, everybody. This video will be available for video on-demand viewing on our Devo system uh, for all of us guys, and then we'll stick on the web for you guys to see uh, shortly. Thanks for tuning in. Thanks for your questions, and we'll see you next time. Bye for now.